Hey everyone, I recently got my hands on the Buffalo NAS uh, Link Station 220D. Um, this is a great uh, network attached attach storage device if you're looking for a private cloud. Um, it's really great uses uh, if you're looking to get away from putting your data into third party cloud providers like Microsoft OneDrive and Google. Uh, uh, drive, uh, Google, what is it called? Go whatever Google's thing is. Um, so yeah, it's pretty easy to set up. I mean, all, all you need is, is to find a place in your home to put it and right out of the box, you get the actual device itself. You get, uh, the power brick in, in an ethernet cord. All you have to do is plop it down connect your ethernet from the device to your router, connect to the power cable, and then uh, the power switch, switch that on. And then we're gonna go to the computer right, so to configure it. Now that we're on the computer, we can, uh, <clears throat> in your instruction manual that comes with it in the quick setup guide, there should be a link to go to. Uh, go ahead and type that in and go there <clears throat> it'll ask you to select your region for me uh, it's United States and Canada and then it'll bring you to here so you just go ahead and select your um, OS I'm on Windows 11 <coughs> um, <coughs> excuse me um, you can download these manuals if you want but I mean you don't really I mean, you don't really have to. The only thing you need is this NAS2 Navigator, right? So accept the software license, download this, and then what you're gonna wanna do is we come here and it should install something called Buffalo NAS Navigator 2. If you open this up, this is going to allow you to identify the local IP address of your um, Buffalo NAS. So for me, um, it's this one right here, and this is the IP address. So we're going to go ahead and copy that. We can actually close this down. We don't need this anymore. Open up a browser, input your IP, press enter, and it's going to bring you to this page. So for you, it's going to be a little bit different. I've already set mine up, um, but basically it's, it's super, super simple. Go through it. Um, pay extra uh, careful attention though when you set up your admin account or any account that you set up. Choose a very, very strong password, and I'm actually going to give you a resource to help you choose a password. There's something called Password Strength Meter. Um, if you go here, you can type your password in here. So if I were to type password123, obviously very insecure password, takes no time to crack with something like rockyou.txt. Anyways. Um, come up with a strong password, put it in here, and uh, see if it actually is strong. Um, very, very important that you do that. So, I'm going to log in here as admin um, after you set it up, right? So, uh, yeah, basically uh, you're all set up. Now, you can, you can use your NAS, uh, you can connect to it via... Uh, SMB I think like I think the default name is workgroup you can put files in there uh, but that's not really a cloud right that's not really a private cloud which is the whole point of this um, you know because in that case it's just gonna be you know it's just gonna be like on your network anyways let's go to advanced settings and let's take a look here um, <laughs> <clears throat> one of the things you're going to want to do is you can configure your folder setup 
your users, your groups. Um, you know, you can turn on uh, FTP if you want. I really do not recommend turning on FTP. That's a very, it's a very insecure protocol. If you want a private cloud, turn on web access, right? And then when you turn on web access, be very, very uh, careful with the access that you give it. So for example, what you want to do is you want to restrict access to your folder. You want to restrict access to everything on your NAS except for the people that you want access to, right? Except for the users you want. For me, since this is just my private cloud, I've restricted it to admin. Um, and that's it. Not even guests. There's no other accounts can, can get access to it. Because for me, I'm going to be storing my YouTube videos on here because I'm running out of space on my, my computer hard drive. And I'm actually going to be storing, you know, some sensitive information. Um, yeah, so you go to drives. Uh, oh, yes, by the way, turn on RAID scanning. Uh, that will periodically check to make sure that there's no bad blocks or errors within your, your disks because these are spinning disks and they can uh, make mistakes. So by default, um, this this Buffalo, at least this, this uh, Link Station 220D, by default it's set to RAID 1. So what does that mean? That means that if you're not familiar with uh, the different uh, RAID uh, numbers, uh, RAID 1 basically means disk mirroring. So in the Link Station 220D, it comes with four terabytes, uh, two drives, each two terabytes. Having RAID 1 means that one drive is used for actual storage and the other drive is just used for um, to mirror that that uh, first disk. So what that means, um, yeah. So what that means, yeah. So here's RAID one, right? So we have A one, A one, A two, A two, A three, so on. Disk zero and disk one. Yeah. So see, it's a mirror image. So this is in place so that if either disk fails and you have to replace that disk um, it will it has the capability of uh, rewriting that new disk to match the old one this is so that uh, you don't lose your data um, yeah uh, you can put RAID 0 on there and this is what RAID 0 looks like. Um, basically, it's just like it's two connected disks um, with no parity check. So if one disk would fail, you would you would lose basically all your data. Yeah, see, no, no fault tolerance or redundancy. Failure of one drive will cause the entire RAID to fail. Yep, due, due to the data being striped across all disks. Right, so in RAID 0, uh, anyways, I'm getting too in depth. Um, yeah, so then we go to services. Um, I don't really, yeah, I don't recommend turning these on. I, I don't, I, I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know, unless you're using iTunes. Um, applications, you can turn on BitTorrent um, if, you, if you're downloading a lot of uh, data from torrents. You know, you can, you, you can configure your your network, uh, make sure it's online. You can make backups if you want to. You can make a direct copy. Uh, you can take snapshots. Um, so yeah. All right, so once you've set up your web access, it's gonna ask you to set up a NAS name. Um, and basically, after setting up your NAS name and making sure that you've restricted access, just go to buffalonas.com and um, what you would do from here is you would enter in your buffalonas.com name, press connect and then it'll ask you to log in and from there uh, your NAS is online and it's ready to use and you can put uh, whatever files you want on there.
So hopefully this helps. Um, this is a really great, this is a highly rated, um, according to my research, it's a highly rated NAS device. So I recommend getting one um, if you're looking to get away from the cloud. So there you go.